Well, Toronto police are probing the January arrest of someone quite close to our next guest. Radio host John Down says he stopped to snap some pictures of a bloody crime scene for his radio station's news site when he was cuffed, charged, held overnight. Charges were later dropped. Now, Down's co-host joins us uh, with more on this story. News Talk 1010's Ryan Doyle is in Toronto. Ryan, I read this story with interest. I mean, the title is why I was arrested and spent a night in jail and why it could also happen to you. Let's go through the story, if you will. Uh, yeah, I mean, it really starts out like any other typical Friday night for, I think, a lot of people in the GTA. The idea of uh, going out for dinner with your loved one and then going to maybe meet some friends. Uh, and that's exactly what happened to John. He went out for dinner. Uh, he went to meet some friends, had a couple of drinks at dinner, had a couple of drinks with friends, and then got on the streetcar around 2 a.m. on his way home with his girlfriend. Uh, they, were on the, they were on the streetcar, and then that's when John noticed uh, some police activity outside the streetcar window, and the reporter slash journalist in him uh, kicked in. In and he got off the streetcar. He said goodbye to his, his girlfriend and said, I'll meet you at home. And he wanted to go investigate what was going on. I mean, that's, that's often what happens in this business, especially if you're a reporter, you're somebody, if you see the flashing lights of a police car, you want to go and investigate and see if there's actually a news story there that you need to call into your newsroom. And even though he was off duty, this is pretty common uh, for John to do. He got to the scene, he uh, got his camera onto, his phone onto the camera mode, he started taking some pictures, and then a firefighter came over to him and asked him to stop taking pictures. And that's when things got a little messy. Uh, John said, well, listen, I, I'm a member of the media. You know, I'm, I'm doing this because it, there might be a news story here. And that's when the firefighter demanded again, at least that's what John claims, uh, to, to stop taking pictures or he'd get the police. The police on the scene uh, were summoned over by the firefighter. And that's when John found a knee in his back. Uh, he was slammed to the pavement. He had his arm trapped underneath uh, his body, under his torso, and he was handcuffed. And uh, this is a circumstance where he was put in the cruiser and told at that point that he was going to be charged with assaulting that firefighter because he threw a punch. That's according to police. Now, John, of course, denies that claim. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and, and then there was, some, uh, as I read through the rest of the article, there was some confusion on his release. He ended up without his uh, keys and that kind of jazz. <coughs> How can this happen, Ryan? It seems to me that he was... Um, innocent through the whole process and there was a false accusation made by the fireman that he'd been punched overall. Is yeah, that your take? Yeah. That is my take. And you know what? That's the scary part of this. I've actually been able to read all of the police notes and all of, I've watched the actual in-car camera uh, footage, which lasted about 35, 40 minutes. Uh, so, you know, I saw how all of this broke down and it seems like uh, either a simple misunderstanding turned into uh, just absolute chaos uh, because at the end of the day, John has every right to stand there and take pictures. It's not actually against the law to photograph what is going on uh, as far as the police, uh, police activity is concerned. It's just not, as long as you're not a fear interfering with what was going on and John maintains he was on the sidewalk well away from where this was happening uh, so you know it was one of those things that I think that in today's day and age where people have cell phones where people have cameras more than they ever had uh, this is a real cautionary tale that if you get too close or what the police deem to be too close you could find yourself in handcuffs in the back of a cruiser and he spent six hours uh, overnight in a cell in 14 division in Toronto yeah, I, as by the chronology, I would have said longer than six hours because it didn't sound like until he got out until about 11 o'clock uh, in the morning. But regardless, I mean, when you look at this situation, though, Ryan, I mean, A, why is it, this is back in January, why is it taking so long to be investigated? And I mean, in, in terms of what you saw, he was in the end charged with uh, public intoxication, I think, according to the article. They, you know him. Did he seem to be hammered? Uh, he didn't seem to be hammered, but I will say he had drinks in him. I, I mean, I wouldn't deny that. I, you hear him talking back and forth with the officers that are driving him uh, to 14 Division. I, I wouldn't say uh, he was completely sober. He had had about eight drinks within the course of about four hours, and uh, he'll be the first one to admit that. Uh, but overall, I wouldn't say that he was hammered by any means. He was char charged with public intoxication, as you said, and, you know, he was held overnight, and that's one of those things where you've got to ask yourself, you know, why did this happen? Uh, to me, this would have been very simple to just say, okay, go home. You're not harming anybody. You're not a harm to yourself. Uh, there's a misunderstanding here. You don't need to be at the scene. See you later. But that's not what happened here, and it escalated quite quickly. And as far as the length of investigation, Pat, I think that's a great question. Uh, first of all, John had to fight the public intoxication car charge, uh, which got dropped, by the way. Uh, they felt that they, I'm guessing they felt that they didn't have enough evidence to, to back that claim up. And there was never any an assault, uh, never an assault charge that, that came forward. So uh, he had to spend all that time in the 
court system, and now the police are investigating themselves as to what went on here. Wow. What a story, Ryan. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Ryan Doyle, co-host with John Downs of uh, Friendly Fire on News Talk 1010.